secondhand coat I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat I tell my daddy not to be depressed All I need for happiness is the best I want a dime and nothing else has appeared And when it comes to men, you know how I feel I want a real man Give me a real man, you know what I mean I want a real man Oh, a real man, you're what I need Comfortable, sexy sleep Hey guys, what's going on? How's everybody doing? How are we all feeling today? Prostate exam today, right? Your prostate today. Checking Dwayne's prostate on the show today. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Real Men. This is the magazine show for men, about men, where men get real. I'm your host, Tim Steves. Let's meet our panel, shall we? Dwayne Hill is here today. Hi, Dwayne. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Good to see you, pal. Oh. I think you're fired up for the show. Yeah, thanks for the bump in the dressing room. <laughs> Here's Lori Elliott joined us. Hey, Laura. Hi. Just a little on Lori's gums is all she needs. <laughs> Ted Dykstra popped in. Hey, Ted. I smoked a joint of crack. <laughs> Ted Street cred, always in question. Timmy Riker is here with us, too. How you doing, Timbo? Crazy ship of fools. Oh, it's unbelievable around here. We don't script it, you might have noticed. Anyway, uh, we're going to get the show started with the commentary from Tim Riker. Go ahead, man. Thanks, Tim. And isn't that Tim Steves a great guy, you know? When I think about it, I'd rather be him than me. Not really. Would you want to be someone other than you? We all fantasize about maybe being someone who's famous and rich, you know? Would I want to be Bill Gates? He's a rich and powerful man, could possibly shape the entire future of computing. But what a pencil neck geek. I'm going to trade in this Adonis body for him? No, thank you. Not for a billion dollars. As a young comic when I was growing up, I idolized Andy Kaufman. I thought he was a comic genius. But would I want to be him? He's a little too crazy for me and also dead of cancer. I don't want to be him. We want to be other people, but not really, especially in this day of media where everyone's put under a microscope and we find out that all these people who are idols to us are really actually fallible, like the rest of us. Who do I really want to be? I just want to be me and maybe add on a few things like the ability to do a better monologue about who we want to be. Tim? <laughs> that was pretty good, Timmy. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, buddy. Uh, you, got not... the, you got the Adonis body going, right? I got some things. Sure. Lori, let's start with Lori Elliott, female perspective. Do you ever wish you were someone else, Lori? Um, I, I don't know necessarily if I wish I was someone else, but I do wish I maybe looked like someone else once in a while. Like, sometimes I kind of wonder what it would be like if I had big boobs. And big boobs? <laughs> Lori! Like, Lori's big wondering what it would be like if she had boobs. big boobs. <laughs> and like a six pack and stuff, and I could like walk down the street. I've always wanted to, you know. With your big boobs and six pack. With your big boobs and six pack. With my big boobs and my six pack. I like this motion for the big boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get gravy off the top of them? Yeah, go big or go home. Better to reach better than go around the top, because I usually catch myself in my eye. Hey, I get tired sometimes. Then I fall backwards, and I, and I go, Help! <laughs> on the six pack. <laughs> Ted, signal. what do you think of the panel? <laughs> well, <laughs> they're all a bit worrisome, <laughs> yeah, I really. Um, I think that I agree with Tim. I'd rather be myself, but I wouldn't mind Bill Gates's money. I don't want to be him, but I, I could live with the money. Right. I'd like to sleep with as many men as Ron Jeremy, the porn star, has. As many men? You just said as many men. <laughs> Not. You, you did. did. You did. did. You're <laughs> out. You're finally okay. out. Yes. You're staying in here. God bless you. Now that's courage. That is courage. Tim, camera three is your apology <laughs> camera. Uh, <laughs> Tim Riker wants to be Ron Jeremy. Honey, I'm Tim, I'm I'd bad. rather be anyone but me right now. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That sort of ends it. Anyone. Uh, me. Wow. <laughs> you need to sleep with me. Uh, you know, it's funny because in this day and age, like, you know, 100 years ago, we were just, you know, we were starving to death and trying to make ends meet. But now we live in such an opulent society. Like, we have so much at our fingertips. You really, I mean, being you is a pretty good thing to be. It's, let's face it, as North Americans, as Canadians, we're in the top 98%, oh, yeah. you know, we're in the top 2%. You know, people, in, you know, hey, you can eat that rock. You know, in Africa, it's like, here, slide that over. Can I lick the outside of it? No, it's my rock. And here, it's like, hmm, 11 kinds of ketchup. <laughs> think now. And different you know, we colors. Really different colors, too. Different colors. They have yeah. green ketchup now. I don't know how that counts. Well, let's change it a little bit. Instead of who you'd like to be, who do you envy? Who's living a life that you envy a little bit, Ted? Oh, boy. Uh, uh, 
I guess I'd like to be Wayne Gretzky because I admire what he does and I like hockey. And now he doesn't and have to play anymore, so you can sit like, around and count your money. He's sort of made a great sort of transition from being a hockey player to running Team Canada and stuff, and I admire him and I think he's a cool guy. Um, or Beethoven, I'd like to be Beethoven, but he's dead. Ah, I wanted to be like Wayne. I got a perm when Wayne Gretzky got one when I was in grade three. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I didn't want to be. Did you get the Farrah Fawcett haircut too? No, I couldn't feather my hair. It just oh. didn't work. Oh well. What I don't under like as as a young man, like men always seem to put posters up of other men when they're growing up and stuff. Whereas women what? put posters up of Hang on men. Now. What? What? Hold on, now I had Farrah. No, they're idols and Cheryl stuff Ladd. like that. No, but I mean hockey players, like you know, like. My brother really liked Joe Sackick, you know, like he had posters of sports guys and but stuff. But then you found those I letters and found out he really liked Joe no. Sackick. No, <laughs> I dreamt we were wrestling, Joe, and we both won. No, but you know what <laughs> I mean? Women, women don't put up posters heroes. of figure skaters or... No, I, I, not very <laughs> often. <laughs> <laughs> but guys Triple put posters camel. up of their heroes, and I, would, I always assumed that that was who they would want to emulate or the people they put up. Posters of where sports I'm, posters and horny yeah. posters. I'd really like to be on Black Fly. I'd yeah. love to be on Black Fly. That what do you want to be? Yeah, that's one of my my dreams. One of your like goals. One of my goals in life is to maybe be maybe they'll on. make a musical. That <laughs> Black Fly, Black Fly. <laughs> Ken watching. I auditioned for that part. <laughs> that's my part, damn it. Look at how forced and contrived his performance is. <laughs> what the hell does this have to do with? <laughs> well, he envy. wants to be in Black Fly. Well, he he wants to be in Black. He envies the Black Fly the lifestyle. I envy the whole cast. <laughs> I envy the whole cast. <laughs> Would you like to be a maiden on Black Let's get out of here. Anybody. This this segment is degenerated. <laughs> nice job. Though, panel. Yes. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Dr. Brian Goldman. He's ER physician from Mount Sinai Hospital, and we're going to talk to prostate cancer. So don't go away. We're talking your prostate on Real Men. <laughs> talk prostate. Welcome back to the show. We're going to switch gears. Get a little more legitimate this segment with Dr. Brian Goldman from, he's an ER physician from Mount Sinai and also with Discovery Health Channel. Thanks for coming in, Doc. Pleased to be back in the zoo, Tim. <laughs> it is a little crazy <laughs> around here today. Mm. Uh, but to get the segment started, let's throw it over to Ted Dykstra for a commentary. Go ahead, Ted. Prostate cancer. Well, I'm a little young to get it, I guess, but uh, I went to a website to, to learn about it last night and uh, uh, I'm not a prude, but it was uh, pretty rough going in there. Uh, came across some terms like digital rectal examination. Digital, I guess, uh, from the Latin meaning finger. I don't know. But it's a finger, and it's not your own finger, and it gets shoved up your rectum, and the doctor checks through your anal wall to see if your prostate has any, and I'm quoting, hard or lumpy areas in it. Then there's the transrectal ultrasonography. Okay, transrectal probably from the Greek ass railway. And uh, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is where sounds are emitted that cannot be heard by the human ear from a probe, which is shoved where? Yes, all together, up your ass, yes. And then there was uh, the uh, cystoscopy, from the Greek cystoscopy, meaning cystoscopy. Um, and uh, this is a, a long, thin, lighted tube, which is shoved not up your bum, but straight down the shaft of your penis. Yes, and uh, then there was the term painful ejaculation. So you're dying, and it hurts when you ejaculate. Thanks a lot, God. Um, I got kind of bummed out, and I thought, you know, if I did have prostate cancer, I came to this site, I I'd be pretty depressed. But then I saw, like a beacon in the night, a little thing that said humor. And I thought, well, that's good, that's good. Patch Adams must work here. Um, let's go and, and check that out, because, you know, if you've been digitally probed and and penally probed, and it hurts when you masturbate, although you didn't quit, did you? Um, then uh, humor is, is what you need. So I press humor, I go to this page, it says humor, no word of a lie, underneath it says, coming soon. <laughs> and I thought God was cruel. Tim. Thanks, Ted. The, so the prostate cancer humor page wasn't up and running it's yet? I guess there'll be, people will be dead before they get the joke. <laughs> Let's welcome Dr. Brian Goldman. Thanks Always for coming in. Happy to be here. So we're talking prostate cancer? That's right. And I would say that none of you guys are at risk of getting prostate cancer. How would you maybe say your dads are. Why would you say that? Just like that. You mean presently? Presently. Not at the present time. Uh, right. Your lifetime risk is one in nine. So it's very similar to breast cancer. One in nine for women I getting heard, breast cancer. Has that stat changed? I've, why did I hear one in four? 
it depends on on the country, depends on the uh, on the study. But, uh, but one in nine. The Canadian is, Cancer Society would say one in nine. Does that mean benign? It, it's malignant tumors, so not counting that. Because so, sometimes you get something that isn't cancer, right? But it's still a problem. It's it called, can, has to be removed. What's that called? It's called benign prostatic hyper, hypertrophy or something, BPH. Yeah, and I think I saw all, that on the website. Let's just say that all real men end up with enlarged prostates if they, if they get old enough. And, and in fact, er, almost every man, if you live to be 100, I would say that the risk of getting prostate cancer would be 100%. But the thing you need to know about prostate cancer wow. is that it doesn't kill everybody. There's a lot of people, a lot of men who can simply it? live with it. It is treatable, um, and the problem is that, that just because you have a prostate cancer diagnosed doesn't mean that you're going to die from it. In fact, a lot of people, a lot, a lot of men live to die of something else. They live to die of a ripe old age of uh, heart disease or, or all, the other, all the other possible diseases as well. Even without getting it taken care of, you mean? That's right. So there's actually a form of treatment called watchful waiting. If, you happen, if you're old enough, let's just say you're 80 and you're found to have a prostate cancer, uh, and you've got some other diseases that make surgery a bit of a problem, uh, maybe you've got a little bit of a heart condition, then doctor might elect to, to do what's called watchful waiting and just wait and see. And the chances are that, that in many cases you'll just live to die of something else. Now, having said that, um, 12 Canadian men die every year, uh, sorry, every day from prostate cancer. So all told, about 4,300 wow. men will die this year alone from prostate cancer. Wow. And that's almost as many men dying of prostate cancer as women dying of, of breast cancer. And yet... So in, in, in the perception in the world, we tend to think that breast cancer is a much bigger problem. You're saying that we problem. don't, we're too young to worry about it, so where do we, when do we start worrying about it? Age 50 and up, and, uh, and, and the older you get, the more, the more likely you are to, to, uh, to have prostate cancer. Having a family history also makes you want to worry a little bit earlier in life, say over the age of 40 or 45. So if you've got, if your father had prostate cancer, if you've got a brother with prostate cancer, if there's a lot of prostate cancer in your family, then you obviously have a genetic risk and you should be worried about it earlier. Do you know, uh, do you guys, do the three guys on panel know the history in their family? Dwayne, do you know the deal? Uh, well, I'm very lucky. My family has no cancer, no heart disease. We have insanity. <laughs> we have Lucky Alzheimer's. You. Grandpa, no pants, can't leave the house. He's out. He's gone. He's down the street. He's in a cop car. He's being shot at. What about what about you, Teddy Ballgame? Do you know the family? Uh, I think my grandfather got it in his late 80s, early 90s, and he died of something else. Uh, but other than that, no, no. My dad has Parkinson's disease, though. Does that make it a worse? No, no relationship no. between. Parkinson's I think the key disease. about diseases. This, you know, this is, I was talking to one of our cameramen earlier. I think the key to diseases is get something that really rich white guys get. Put 60 million <laughs> towards prostate research. I cannot perish. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like heart disease, you know, like, you know, every president, you know, is, is worried about heart disease. So, you know, people just put money into this kind of thing. You know? <coughs> well, that's because heart disease is the most common disease. And, uh, you know, if you, if you have a heart attack, you can die right then and there. So it's, it's the outcome's more dramatic in a person, I mean, I've heard of people who've lived for 20 years with prostate cancer, and, and yes, you can live for 20 or 30 years with heart disease too, but you need a lot more treatment to be able to There's get that. There's things we so, can do, sorry, go ahead, Laura. No, I was just gonna say, it seems like it's more easy to talk about the heart disease thing than prostate cancer for men in oh, general Oh, I think Lori's well. really onto something there. <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing. Right. It, you know, it's, it's, it's in the privates, and uh, it involves getting the DRE, the dreaded yeah. digital rectal examination. And you, and you must want to drink before you go into some of these. You're just like, oh, you know what, I'm going to have a quick bracer of scotch. Because, I mean, how many can you look at, you know? Or you just treat it totally like... Are you talking about the guy who's well, giving he's not it yeah. at or yeah. receiving it? No, the, yeah. guy who's give, the guy who's giving <laughs> it. The guy who's like, yeah, but he's not Mr. Looking Phillips at it, in your right? office. <laughs> All right, you the fat guy. We're out of time on yeah. the segment. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of time on the segment. When we come back, I th thanks for coming in, Doc. I, cheers. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. We've been talking prostate cancer, but when we come back, we're going to talk foreplay, switching gears. <laughs> and and we, we hit the street on the topic as well. We're coming back. Talk to me about foreplay, sir. You got any advice for the young people out there in the foreplay department? Foreplay department, eh? I'm assuming we're talking on that topic, which is sexual in nature. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to do a segment on foreplay. and. For the kids, I got absolutely no advice for them. They're 10 light years ahead of where I was at that time, and so they're most probably more than capable of doing their own thing at the present time. <laughs> they don't need advice from me. Hey, welcome back to the show. We're going to talk foreplay this segment. Dr. Brian Goldman thought he was going to get out of here, but we said, no, just sit tight, Doc. You can talk to foreplay. You can hey, speak I, to the subject. I can talk about anything. <laughs> <laughs> and I will. <laughs> right on. So uh, let's start with Lori. Lori, foreplay. Mm. Foreplay. Well, Is there I... enough foreplay going on? 
Yeah, yeah. I think at the beginning of a relationship, though, it's more like, you know, you want like six play, seven play, eight play, ten play type stuff, but then it kind of dwindles <laughs> down and it's two then, play. Eventually it's two or one. It's, it's, I think it's cyclical, though, you know, as you, re as you fall back in love with the person you're in, then the foreplay comes up again, but. So, I you think think it's an for, thing. so you think foreplay is part of love? It's part of showing affection? And... Yeah, yeah. I think so. Totally. totally. I've never understood the, the, uh, when women complain about that men uh, skip the foreplay and get right into the... And it's like, I don't understand it from the perspective of the foreplay. I, I could spend six hours on the foreplay. If, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need to get right to it. I've, I've never been one of those guys that, oh, I just want to get right to it and get in and get out. Yeah. I'm like, I'll spend six hours with you if you want, baby. I don't, I don't I've never understood the... I think there's something odd about somebody who <laughs> yeah. just jumps in like that. I agree with you. I agree with you completely. I, I don't know. I don't Someone think there's any guys that don't want to do foreplay. I mean, are there men around who go in night? No, that's not what well, I, I want. Well, I think, I mean, I think, does that come with complacency, kind of? Like when you're dating somebody for a couple of years, it's like, <laughs> all right, flop over on your side. Now, I'm probably going to make this a little bit painful for you, as per my personal fantasy. And then I'll probably roll over and fall asleep. Don't touch the penis when I'm done. Thank you. Oh, yeah, but here. it's got to come no, back no, up again, or else I, the relationship will die. I'm, a, hu I'm a huge, huge foreplay fan. Because, I mean, we discussed this before, but it's like women get so ripped off in bed. You know, I really, really want to be that guy who's like, oh, that's, oh, my God. Oh, I can't feel my left eye. I can't feel my left eye. You are a god. You're a poison god. You know, you want to be that guy. Him off anytime, but yeah, yeah. jump in. Ah, question. <laughs> anytime you want to get in, doctor, you just say, Dwayne, in. shut up. What's foreplay? <laughs> what does everybody mean by foreplay? That's a good question, I, doctor. For, well, star oh, sorry. for starters, I think kissing. Mm -hmm. Kissing is like, it's highly underrated. It's just called kissing, but it's foreplay. It's kissing in the right places. Good many different can, ways and repeatedly. Good kissing can you mean get I had four play when I left my mom's oh, house yeah. last night? Yeah. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was foreplay? Yeah, well, unless she was a guy. Remember, we like men. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> anyway. mm, I wish Ryan Jeremy was here right now. I'll be over here shutting, shutting up now. You porn star. <laughs> but, you know, I think it start with that. I think people don't even think about it. Ted, are you a big foreplay guy, man? Uh, Romantic guy? Married dude? I think dude? I, I always was. Now I'm married and have a, a four-month-old baby, so it's kind of like, he's asleep. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. No time for the Oh, he sort of dictates. And the Benny uh, Hill theme play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. Really fast piano music. Okay, good, we did it. Or right in the middle. Is that the baby crying? Oh, I can relate yeah. to this. I've got a three yeah. and a half year old. Yeah. And when you've got it changes a. Everything. It does. You got a window of a we sex just window. Go. Yeah, you have a sex window. When the sex window opens up, Doc, you just dive through. Yep. Four play, more play. And so your child's four months old. Yeah. Boy or girl? Boy. Wait till he gets old enough to hear the foreplay. Oh, great. Thanks, Doc. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, real, that's a real foreplay killer. <laughs> that's a foreplay killer. How loud is your foreplay? Daddy, <laughs> what are you doing to mommy? Daddy, well, how loud is your foreplay? Daddy, mommy's crying. I don't know if I have baby waking foreplay. Let's so. see if I can get Baby waking foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> I think foreplay could be as loud Sorry. as you want it to be. Sure. Tim wants to talk about his dog. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just talking. Okay. peanut butter you do on my play with your dog. <laughs> I'm glad I had extra time to think of it this so I can get this line out right. Okay, my wife and I just got a dog, yeah. and it has affected before. our sex life. There, that was, that was cool, right? Does the dog get angry at you? For the you? better or worse? No, it's just the dog is there looking at us. Is the and dog it's just, gay? So it's like you also, and that inhibits you. <laughs> And it wouldn't what, inhibit you? Well, I don't know. I've heard of a lot of couples that, that use but a dog as pointer, part of a threesome. Doc. It's a oh. pointer. <laughs> hey, God, hold the phone. Oh, hold the phone. Say that again. Say that again. I've heard of a lot of couples who use the dog as part of the uh, foreplay. In what way? Well, you know, they can create menage a trois. They can what? have a little scenario. <laughs> Look, Perch. Uh, Are you Perch. a psychiatrist? You're, you're not a perch. Perch. What's, the, what's perch. the most important sex organ in the body? The, the brain. Dog. The brain. The no, dog. The, the, the brain. brain. The brain. Sorry. Whatever brain. reality you can create can happen. That's what foreplay is all about. It's what you see, it's what you think, it's what you feel. Kissing's part of it, so but it's not So if the dog everything. is True. there, you should use it. Is that your <laughs> advice? If it's not there, you pretend one's there. Use it or lose it. I have a pair of these that I use during foreplay once, and he won't say a word now. <laughs> Polly, want a cracker? <laughs> I can't believe you're actually inhibited by your dogs. <laughs> what kind of dog is it? I can't believe you're not. <laughs> She's the kind of dog that looks at you while you're having sex like oh, this. Oh, it's a... <laughs> are you oh, hurting it's a mommy? She dog. It's a oh, voyeur so dog. A well, she'll jump up on the bed and try and get involved and... In... Well, you know what? That's Maybe you should just go there once, doors. like the good doctor. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here, doc. I can't believe what's happened to real men today. When we come back, we got a couple of minutes left. Dr. Brian Golden's here. He's talking foreplay with some very unusual ideas. We're coming right back.
Justice. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the show. We've been talking about foreplay on Real Men today. We've been joined by Dr. Brian Goldman from Mount Sinai. Thanks for coming in, Doc. Happy to so be here. So what about the foreplay thing? You and the wife are ready to shake it down, get a little romantic. You throw the fastball, what is it? The fastball. <laughs> <laughs> fastball? What is the fastball? You know what it is? I think foreplay starts with a nice meal in a nice restaurant. Nice romantic dinner. Uh, instead of sitting facing each other, you're sitting beside each other. Oh. Nice secluded Ooh. table. Oh, attention yeah. to detail. Absolutely. Nice bottle of wine. And Tim, and Tim doesn't realize that fastball is an actual medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've got, I've got fastball. What do you do, Doc? You, uh, it got here five minutes before me. It should be in the waiting room. <laughs> Tim, thinks, every, fastball. Tim oh, thinks everyone listens to as much sports radio as him, so when he uses this <laughs> jargon, you gotta... <laughs> it's, like, it's like George W. Bush. We got a slider here? Is that what we got? A knuckleball? <laughs> a what, sir? <laughs> Get away from the red button. I think Dr. Goldman, who I was talking to, by the way, understood me completely, <laughs> didn't you, yes. Doc? I must say, I prefer slow pitch to fastball. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a little high and outside. <laughs> Nothing foul. That's Dwayne right after this show. Okay, oh, high and outside. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I All right, that's with the ball. Yeah. If you're watching, I'm sharing. Can't tell you how many times I've been called out at the plate. <laughs> oh, in the dark. No underhanded comments. <laughs> I don't know anything about baseball. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, Lori. The pun police are going to take the rest of us away. We're better off. All right. Oh my I'm trying to think of a, I'm trying to do a pun with the word rohypnol in it. What about Back groups? to foreplay. Okay, hold on. Last word from Lori on foreplay. Quick, Lori. Uh, 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 keep it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. That's good. Everybody just watched Scarface, and he, he teaches you all at the beginning when he's teaching his buddy. It's just all about the. Oh yeah, slap. Oh, there's the tongue. some things you can't unsee. Manny. Tim yeah. Riker doing that with his tongue. You're having a great episode. We're having a great you are. episode. That's all the time yeah. we have for this uh, episode of Real Men. Standing Thanks standing to Dr. Brian Goldman for coming in. Thanks, Doc. We've been talking foreplay and your prostate. Mm. That's all we got today on Real Men, where men get real. We're out. Oh,